My topic is why family businesses fail. And uh, the answer to me is very simple because all businesses fail. It's not only family businesses fail. And why do all businesses fail? So first of all, you might have heard a lot of statistics about how many family businesses have failed, but something worthwhile knowing about what others have also happened. 1982, a book is written in search of excellence. 60 case studies are given there about what do we learn from these great companies. By 1992, majority of them were blinked. Fortune makes up a list of five top companies in the world. 1970, the fortune list, 70% of the companies don't even exist by 1990. And then you have data about every life of company in UK, every life of company in Japan, 14, 15 years. The reason is not something only family business, all the businesses have, the challenge is the changing environment. ICI, once upon a time, had 300,000 employees. When? When Britishers were in rule, wherever British colony was there, ICI was a preferred company, so they were a 300,000 great company. When the British Empire went, ICI had no other way, so ICI had to die. Kodak, once upon a time, when technology is at some particular thing, you have a great advantage. When the technology changes, you come back to zero. Nokia, maybe when mobile came, fabulous. But when smartphone came, you come back to zero. This understanding that when the things change, it changes for everyone. In fact, for family businesses, even better that we can come out. Uday Kota was in the business of bill discounting. We'll go to the company, we'll discount the bill, and we'll go to the bank and re-discounting the bank. One day, RBI uh, circular came, re-discounting bank. Business became zero. Next day, Uday Kota starts business of raising half purchase. This is the ability of family business. You have a challenge in one business, you have agility to move out to another. Now, if you ask me what happened to build discounting business, yes, it goes, but it has transformed into another business. Aziz Premji was in the business of oil. And then one manager came and then there is a whole story about how he learned about computer. And then went into hardware, not that great a success, but went into software. Now, this ability exists with family businesses. So, generally, if you take statistics all over the world, family businesses outperform than non family businesses. So, one of the things is there is a owner is involved in the business. Many times there is a discussion should ownership and management be separated? My experience is the real beauty of family business is because they are together. It is that when salary is to be paid, my customer is not giving order. And if I have to pay salary, the kind of madness that comes to my mind, new solution comes out. This ability comes because that ownership is there. In government department, there is no ownership. They are just doing management. And they are, you don't assume that all government people are bad. In fact, 90% of them are extremely good. But just because there is no sense of ownership, they cannot do things, whatever is required. Why you can call family business will do well, better than others also. Then we can do something which is called unconventional. Today market is going down, capital market was down, mid cap shares are very low, right? Most of the fund managers will not invest in this today, but we can. We can think a little longer and invest for it today. That is the advantage family businesses have. And then, very, very important thing is, life is not black and white. Life is grey. Should we give credit or should we not give credit? You cannot make one rule. Sometimes I will give credit, sometimes I will not give credit. Should we give discount, should we not give discount? Sometimes I will, sometimes I will not. Should I hire a very highly paid person or not? 
sometimes yes, sometimes no. Now these are something great, ability to handle great is a big, big asset in life and family business you inculcated from day one. I see my father and uncle fighting like hell. But I see also them together. This point that falls apart but can be together is called paradoxes. There is a difference between problem and paradox. Problem is a solution. Paradox, you have to live with it. Me and my brother, most likely we are going to have different temperament. In fact, opposite temperament. If I am academically very bright, my brother is more likely to be extrovert or chatting with people and socializing. Is nice word, or otherwise you can say wasting time. Is a bad word. But in business, you require both. So in business, we learn to manage the contradictions so well that it's so easy. And sometimes that is the problem. When people who have not worked in family business, they are from professional company, Tata Exports, they join family business. And they find it very difficult. Because they think, there is no system in here, there is no system here. And this is actually a richness of family business. So, all these things I am telling so far, just as a good part of the whole story. That family businesses are actually outperforming, there are reasons for them to outperform. But then, now we have to come to our current realities. You know? Our reality tells us what? That a lot of us made money with information arbitrage. It means, I knew who was the user, I knew who was the source supplier, I will buy something at 100 rupees, sell it at 200. Nobody knew both, so that is what I was making advantage. It's called information arbitrage. I knew a source from Ahmedabad from which I can get fabric. And I knew this is the company where they need this, so I did interview of this arbitrage. Now, when information becomes so fast and so easy, that information arbitrage is going down. So, I was talking to a person with consumer durable that today which model to buy, everybody can see in Amazon, everybody can slip to a flip card, everybody can compare. So, my advantage of information arbitrage has gone down. And second thing is, most of us in family business made money by intermediation. I was an agent of Tata Steel, dealer in Tata Steel. Tata Steel made steel. Then they told everybody in the world, you want to buy steel, go to my dealer. So all that I was doing was just open the shop, sit, people will keep coming and I can take money. Now, with the supply chain becoming shorter, Tata Steel people are thinking, why do we give dealer? Maruti consumes tons and tons of steel, why should it go through dealer? Let me go directly. Then when they go to Maruti, it's a huge, but then next time, then Godrej, then even smaller. And now what happens? Majority of the volume customers, Tata Steel will go directly. So the advantage which I had of intermediation with supply chain reducing is going down. So now what is my daily reality? Margins are going down. Every business in India, this is the reality. And costs are going up. I had my accountant for last 20 years who is now with me and his last salary was 25,000. Now that he has gone, I am looking out for another accountant. Nobody is available less than 50,000 rupees and this guy does not know even half of what my earlier accountant did. March is going down, cost going up, our position has become like a super between this. So majority of the family business people today have realized there is no more fun in the business anymore. So they will advise their children, you do something else. This is where one thing started. And then issue starts coming all along that when every day we come on hearing business is not fun anymore. Whereas actually speaking, today business is doing far better than what it was before. In India, majority of the business started in late 70s, early 80s. Majority. Struggle. Extreme struggle. So it was more or less everybody who did business was for survival. 
100 rupee kg was thola stock exchange index was 100 you cannot buy a car 10 year waiting period you cannot buy a telephone 10 year waiting period business is a small and struggle till 92 95 more or less they stabilized 95 to 2000 was tough time every business in india far tougher than what it is now something happened in 2002 we don't know what happened but since 2002 business shot up like anything every family business person that i have met would say we have won so much money which we had not even dreamt humne itna paisa kamaya sapne mein bhi nahi socha the point was because we were forming in 80s the dream very lacks and today business we are to grow this whole thing made some changes in us all our offices became air condition all our challenges which earlier used to excite us became headache all the people who were actually enterprising running in the world started sitting in the office and waiting for customer to come and our approach to business has got tremendous standards now actually i wanted to try out something with you all let's see ah uh, there is some test we have to do about uh, how good or uh, not how good good is not the right word what is our business personality just to take a call it is so this is a 100 rupee note okay the number of the note is 865305 865305 if you add up all the number it become 9 anyway if you are interested in whatever numerology or whatever it is i am going to make option of this note the rule is very clear whoever is the highest bidder gets the note actually and they have to give it up and whoever is the previous bidder also has to give the amount they don't get anything okay is the rule actual option so you don't think that you can just bid anything this is again you will have to actually pay right it will be always in the increment of 5 we start i will repeat the rules of the game it is a 100 rupee note whatever is the number totals up to 9 i am going to auction it it will be in the bid of 5 so the first bid will be my bid it will be 5 rupees then onwards whoever wants to bid will raise the hand I'll accept that bid, and that way the auction will go. Suppose at that point of forty, the auction stops. Then that person will give me forty rupees, and I'll give him the note. And the person who was the previous bidder, thirty-five, will give me money. Thirty-five, they don't get anything. And the previous bidder, thirty, nothing to do. Is the rule clear? Sorry. No, I don't know what is American option. This is Parimal option, <laughs> right? No, 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 no. You bid whatever is the bid. You pay the full amount. The previous person also. Now, question is: Are you confident about your intellect that you understood the question? The rules are clear, right? So nobody is having doubt. If you are having doubt, ask me right now. No doubt. Okay. So I will start. The first bid is mine. Okay, so five rupees. Next bid. Ten here, fifteen here. Where? Twenty. You see, this is the question. Tell me, why did you bid? Why did you bid? You see, after all, there are hundred people here. They didn't bid, but you bid. Why did you bid? Okay, so it was out of sympathy. Why did you bid? Okay, now he modified his response based on my feedback to him. So he is no more sympathy. But he thought if a hundred rupee note is available in ten rupee, why not? Right? And what? <coughs> he can take a risk of twenty. Actually, he took a risk of fifteen. You bet. Huh? Your bid was ah twenty. Now is the question for us to all the people. You have a reflection sheet in front of you. just answer us this question when what is your approach to new opportunity when a 100 rupee note is available in 10 rupees what is your approach you have that uh, sheet with you here is the sheet 
you just have to tick mark whether do I look out for it? Mostly yes, mostly no, whatever way you like. Do I jump at it? This is actually happens in business. In Bhatti, they started giving tax advantage. In JNK, they are giving super tax advantage. They say you set up a factory here and we give you money and money. But we were not. Some of us we are not bothered. And not some of us. I can tell you with having worked with family businesses, left, right, and center. Somewhere any new opportunity is concerned, our eyes are limited. I am concerned to my field. If only 500 rupees was available in 20 rupees, I am not yet ready. This is not my business. Or there must be some trap. Right? Well, that is the reason why I asked you the first question. Are you confident about your intellect? Have you understood the question? What makes us doubt ourselves? You have understood the rules of the game. It was very clear. How can there be a trap when you have understood the thing? Here is our whole point. Do I prefer saving? No. Why do I keep 20 rupees with me? With me. The fact was that 100 was available. But no, no, let me protect my 20. A lot of us have a lot of money invested in land. And it's so unfortunate that last 10 years, 15 years, the land prices have unrealistically gone up because of which a wrong notion has come that investing in land is better than investing in business. Majority of the people in the business today in India are saying that we made more money by, invest, by our appreciation in land than in our business, which is actually unfortunate conclusion. Had you invested the same money in business, what you would have wanted you or not? So are we having saving mindset or investment mindset? My submission to you is that when you started the business, you had investment mindset. You are ready, you are ready to jump, you wanted to excite, you wanted to do things. But somewhere that thing settled, where well, now let me wait and watch. So here we have, now we go ahead. Okay, play here. Why they will connect, I tell you, that these two men are there in the same place. Waiting with one question, who moved my cheese? Then they are digging something more here and there, hoping that there will be some cheese available there, something must have been covered, and then they are working. Then one of them is saying, I realize we are working here when it is no more there. Why don't we go out and search? Then the other person says, what happens if outside there are more problems? Let us wait here. One day it will come back again and they don't try at all. And this 20 years ago, these authors started okay. Audio is not coming. I will speak. He says, who oh, moved my chair? It was here. This guy says, oh, but based on that, I had the plans. I will be making so many, so many things based on the cheese. Now what will happen? Now he is worried. All my plans are gone to the dogs. He says, nothing to him, we won't go outside, we'll have to search here. We have to find out who moved my cheese. How come these Chinese people are coming with so low price, so low cost? How come these uh, e-commerce are coming? Who moved my cheese? Now they are thinking on struggling and struggling. Go out, there may be danger, there may be something there, and there is no guarantee that there will be cheese there. If you are into one business, if you venture into another, there is no guarantee that you will succeed there. So better remain where we are. And he keeps on working and working. So now he will keep on digging the wall to find out more cheese. And they start blaming. People are not good, competition is ruthless, things are becoming bad, GST has made big changes. All the blame game started. We started our business in worst time. That time we were not complaining. So now he keeps on digging. He will not move. He will keep struggling here only. Who moved my cheese? So anyway, uh, hopefully you can get the book. The question is 20 years this was available. And even today we face the same question. Every family business today is complaining that in our business margins are going down, costs are going up. 
because you are into a model which has already changed. If engineering college 20 years ago were in short supply, they were a brilliant model. Today engineering colleges are flooded. There's no more great business model. Consumer durable store, once upon a time, everybody had to buy from shop only. So you as a shop will give 20% margin, I also will give 20% margin, and we were only two. Now the company ends up appointing 10. And then come Amazon and Flipkart. Now if with them I am competing, hopefully one day it will come back, which is never going to happen. So for us the question comes, Aja PPT guy. Come back on PPT. For us is the question, what have things changed? In business, things have changed phenomenally. I was in jewelry business, once upon a time, people used to buy jewelry as an investment. Now, with the new generation coming in, they are buying jewelry as a design. So when it was investment, it was sold by weight. Today it is sold by peace. And in coming time, it has nothing to do with how much gold is there inside. We are gearing up or we say once upon a time people used to come. Now that since uh, Tanishka has come, everybody to other business has become problem. Once upon a time, we were buying from some place and selling some place. Today they are going to do directly. You want to do? I was telling you, if you want to do steel trading, fantastic, I am ready to buy from you. You become a money lender. That is, you buy, give me six months or three months credit. Actually, it is one month credit, but nobody pays me for two months. Three months is part of life. And we have accepted that it is going to be like that. A money lender is smart. He lends money, but he takes security. A steel trader gives security and also gives money. And not only rupees, not only steel, he gives for over, suppose you buy something worth 1 lakh, he takes out 18,000 rupees from his pocket and gives you, take the money also. That is the GST credit the other side of My one student said, sir, whenever I have a cash flow problem, I will make a purchase of 1 crore. What will happen? 18 lakh GST, I will get credit immediately. Now, this is what happens when you were successful in one business model, now that business model is changed. So for us, the question is this. Business is no longer the same. And it is nothing to do with family. It is more to do with our adaptability, accepting that things will change. Cheese is no more there. If you keep on struggling for the cheese, there is not going to come back. People are not going to come back to jewelry for investment. People are going to go to jewelry for design. It is going to be more fashion. It's not going to go back. Then there is a change in management. You know, India has a brilliant cadre of people. All people who are in 40 to 60. They were super computer. You know, they will remember five years ago this customer had not paid us money this time. Five years ago he took from here and bought there. That, uh, that person had done like this. They will know in the machine if there is a breakdown, what is the breakdown there. They will know in bank if the balance is not there, the street check is to be cleared, what is the way to be done. If the local social people are coming to collect donations, they know how much to give, how much not to give. One man, super computer, he can handle everything. And when the younger generation comes in, they find it very difficult. Father will tell the son, why don't you take a round of the factory? The son goes in a marathon, runs in five minutes and comes back. Okay, what did you say? Everything is working. Now when father takes a round, the production person follows because he knows this guy can spot things which I can't. In five minutes, he finds out five critical things which the production person did. That supercomputer was here. The question is, with one supercomputer, you can work one business, one shop, one factory, small business. If you have to grow, natural ice cream from Bombay was one shop. Now, if you have to go to 160, you require a different approach that is called management, making other people to work for you. This, the supercomputer people don't know much. Because ultimately everything I have managed. I know everything. 
And then, in family things are there. I never argued with my father. My son is arguing with me. Aldi Ram person is telling me that, you know, we learn, how did we learn? We learned by placing the feet of our father. And when we were placing that for one, uh, one hour, whatever you will tell, that is how we learn. Now, today, children are not doing this. We were we grew up in a time of king. Whatever father says is a terror. In today's time, it's all democracy. Everybody wants to have a say. I can't speak whatever I uh, will. When we work, it was like this. Now what it is like this. The question is that whatever you work was once upon a time. Now things change. When your children grow, they become adults. A businessman is telling me that he told his son that we are taking up a certification plant in uh, Russia. Will you like to handle it? Uh, do our research. The son started handling whatever, whatever it is. The matter remained for three months. One day the son is complaining. You know, my father doesn't bother about me at all. What happened? I learned from accountant that last week my father went to Russia for the sulfuric acid plant deal. He did not even inform me. Father and son were sitting. The father started laughing. I never realized when children grow up. All along my life, I took decision like this. Somebody told me on phone, minister is ready to meet tomorrow, are you ready? I said, come and I am ready. The fact that now I have to tell my son in wall that he is handling this I didn't know and I have never done it. A typical father was never questioned by anybody. Today the son or daughter coming and asking questions is a big problem. How do I handle it? We never asked to our parents the question, but these people are asking questions. And a typical family business supercomputer as he was, he always employed people less capable than him. So they always admired him. Now the son and daughter question him. This facing is a shock of life. It's the biggest shock. When we fight with the world is one thing, but when we handle with the family, then it's a different thing. So what is changing? Family is changing, business is changing, management is changing, and we are living like hay and hog, who won my cheese. Hopefully, one day something will happen. All fathers are expecting that they will come here and their sons or daughters will learn wisdom from here and start becoming obedient. And all son and daughter, they come here with the idea that my, now my father will learn to let go. Everybody wants others to change. Not realizing that after all said and done, things are changed as it is. We, if we want to win, we will have to adapt. Just before closing, a person from Rajasthan came to Chennai to open a shop. In Rajasthan, the shop was Dhoti. Agarwal Dhoti Mart. He opened the shop in Chennai, Agarwal, Dhoti, Mart. One week, no business. Immediately he checked with people. What's the problem? Why people are... He says, they are, nobody wears Dhoti. Then what do they wear? They wear Lungi. Okay, next day the business chain. Agarwal, Lungi, Mart. This is called adaptability of family business. Just to survive, we learn to adapt. We learn to change. I was in the stock market. We were having cry in the market. Bombay Stock Exchange. Everybody had to come. When it became old and NSC where everybody can open, we all have to change. So our biggest issue for us is everything is brilliant around. Things have changed for better. Today the opportunities for family businesses are phenomenal. If you have no money in pocket, incidentally, you know the story of Lakshmi Mittal, he is not a rich guy. In 10 years from 87 to 97, he became the largest producer in the world. And each one of us can have a magnanimous dream like this because today things have changed drastically. So for us it is like this. Do we take our family business with this idea of expanding it many times, with the spirit of growth, with taking on the challenges and preparing our whole family to learn to take advantage and grow. Finally, we have this opportunity, what we need is to understand what is happening. We need to anticipate what is going to happen next. And we need to gear up. That is where the great business opportunities are.
Thank you very much.